After an incredible five weeks in Turkey, we flew 1,400 miles northwest to Hanover in north central Germany. Another 90 minutes by car, our destination was the medieval town of Goslar at the feet of the Harz Mountains. We initially chose Goslar because we had access to our niece's apartment, but we discovered that it was so much more than a place to stay. A mining town for over 1,700 years, now a UNESCO World Heritage City, Goslar contains over 1,800 historic buildings, the most in all of Germany. The history of Goslar is entwined with the history of the Ramelsberg mines, a couple kilometers south of town. Archaeological evidence shows mining in the area for 3,000 years, and some 7th century Anglo-Saxon artifacts discovered in England were made from Harz mountain ore. A 10th century Saxon chronicle recorded that Goslar was founded in the year 922 and puts the formal birth of the Ramelsberg mining industry in 968. In the early 11th century, King Henry II of Germany, later the Holy Roman Emperor, built the Goslar Imperial Palace, Kaiserpfalz, and Cathedral. Goslar was a key imperial city for the next 350 years. Ore from the mines, especially copper, has made it into items all over Europe throughout the centuries. From bells, to chandeliers, to clocks, to imperial thrones, the stream of wealth from the prodigious mines filled imperial coffers and funded continuous imperial travels around the empire. This practice was required to keep control over the vast agricultural territory of loosely loyal fiefdoms. An imperial entourage could number from several hundred to a couple thousand retainers. Feeding and housing them was expensive. Goslar became a free city in the late 12th century and joined the Mercantile Hanseatic League from the 13th to 16th centuries. Proceeds from the mines during this period brought great wealth to the town. Protective walls were built around the perimeter as were many of the most elaborate and expensive buildings. Slate was also extracted from the hillside during this period and used to tile many houses and other buildings. The Protestant Reformation that started in 1517 came to Goslar in 1526 and the town was caught up in Catholic-Protestant conflicts. The town lost its mining rights in 1552 but the mine continued to be fought over for 350 years leading up to the First World War. Goslar celebrated its 1,000 year anniversary in 1922, but the economic depression of the 1930s moved the towns and mines under Nazi party control. Fortunately, the historic town survived World War II with no major damage. Today, Goslar is a wonderful blend of modern, traditional, and historic. There's plenty of shopping, including a very nice indoor mall, a farmer's market that operates twice per week, and there's even a Woolworths. Many restaurants and bars are housed in historic buildings. The center of town is the historic Market Square. Its architecture is a big draw for tourists. 
The 500-year-old building that is home to the Kaiserwerth Hotel has remarkable carvings of German emperors and an unfortunate debtor painfully making good on his payments. The ancient looking glockenspiel was actually donated in 1968 by the mine's operating company to commemorate the 1000th anniversary of Ramelsberg mining. Located near the market square, the double spire of the Lutheran Market Church is the most prominent structure in Goslar. For a few euro, you can climb to a viewing platform on the North Tower, 231 steps up. Along the way, you get a good look at the inner workings of the clock gears. The top provides a wonderful panoramic view of the town and nearby countryside. The trees around town and the nearby wooded hills are beautiful, especially in autumn. There are a couple reservoir lakes and several hiking trails just a couple kilometers outside of town that offer spectacular views back down into the lowlands. The rugged Harz Mountains are the highest elevation in this part of Germany. From Goslar, the area is accessible by bus, but most easily accessed by car. The first stop was the town of Hanenklee. The town is known primarily for its early 20th century medieval style staved church. Popular over all of Northern Europe before the year 1500, today the vast majority of staved churches are only in Scandinavia, particularly Norway. This is one of the few outside of Scandinavia and also one of the few built in the 20th century. Hanenklee is also a lovely ski and mountain bike town with beautiful fall colors. After visiting the church, we stop for coffee and cake at a lakeside cafe. The Hartz Mountains are the setting for many fairy tales, including Hansel and Gretel, Sleeping Beauty, Rumpelstiltskin, and Little Red Riding Hood. Unfortunately, a dark, all-too-real story is taking place in the mountains today. A bark beetle infestation, powered by the warmer climate, is killing hundreds of acres of forest. Lake Otter, a reservoir built in the early 18th century, is surrounded by dead trees. The runoff from them is so bad that it's staining the water an unhealthy color of brown. There are numerous thermal spas in Germany, so we checked one out. This one had multiple indoor and outdoor pools, and it was our first clothing optional establishment. A Vic opted four, but I figured when in Rome, Overall, it was a wonderful, relaxing experience. Another place we checked out is billed as the longest pedestrian suspension bridge in the world. Hanging above the Bada River Gorge, parallel to the Rapbada Dam, it certainly looks long and intimidating. It's a very popular spot on weekends and we were lucky we got in early before the crowds got even worse. In addition to the bridge, there's a zip line that crosses over the bridge and plunges into the gorge. It 
looked like a lot of fun, but the weather was cold enough without flying face first at 60 miles an hour, so we were satisfied being on the bridge. There's also a swing that drops you out of the gondola in the middle of the bridge. <laughs> then hauls you back up. Veringeroda Castle is often compared to Neuschwanstein near Munich. The final approach is a pleasant wooded uphill walk. The castle itself fits the fairy tale history of the Harz region. The foundations of the castle date from the 12th century, but the current neo-romantic structure was built in the late 19th century by the Prussian Count Otto. The views of the valley and town below are well worth the climb up.